Hello everyone, I'm the Solo Gamer, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. Now today we're going to be uh, taking a trip to the purple planet, Eve. And I modified my ship mostly because I needed more thrust and uh, fuel. This is it, the Solar 2 Planetary Explorer. It's pretty large. There's, uh, there's only 306 parts. I mean, <laughs> uh, most of it is struts. You won't believe how unstable it is, even with all these struts. Let me explain what each stage does. This stage gets us to about 15,000 kilometers. Not much at all. This stage gets us past 70,000. And then this one is basically the stage that'll take us the distance. As you can see, we aren't just using a nuclear engine. I actually added liquid fuel engines on the side here just for some extra thrust to get things done a little bit faster and to slow our speed down once we get into an encounter with Eve. Let's go to the launch pad. All right, here we are. We get Neil right there. But before we get things underway, I kind of want to explain a little bit about the inner planets. Oh, there's my junk from the last tests that I did. They're actually stuck in an orbit. I thought um, at the lowest point it would come back in, but they don't. So they'll be stuck up there for the rest of uh, this persistent save. Anyways, okay, my junky solar system. Now the inner planets require more delta V to get to, so it requires more fuel to burn. So what we're going to want to do is actually launch and head to 270 instead of 90 degrees. And the best time to launch is when your ship on the launch pad is right smack dab in the middle of Kerbin, facing the sun. So that you're heading straight out this way. And that's going to make it so that when you get a solar orbit, if you keep thrusting while you're still in Kerbin's influence, it'll actually shrink it down instead of expanding it. And that's what we're going to do. I will show you how it works. Let's wait till the KSC is actually smack dab in the middle of Kerbin. All right, here we are. Now, before I actually launch, a lot of people use math to get to the planets, especially the inner planets, because really, you're using a lot of fuel to get to them. They would say Eve should be about 40 degrees right around in there. I, I do it a little bit differently. I don't use math. I'm going to say that's good right there. Once we get around and fix our plane and all that, then we'll, we'll see where Eve is going to be. Let's go back to the launch pad. SAS on, throttle up, and uh, I think we're good to go, right? Yes, yes, hello moon, let's go. Now I do have to say, if you download this ship, you may not be able to fly it. I mean, my computer's having difficulty with it, and uh, I've got a good computer. So if you don't have a decent computer, I would not even attempt to download this ship. But if you want to, it'll be in the link description, as with all of my other ships. Alright, that's done. Good. As you can see, we're wobbling on the bottom and on the top. The middle is perfectly straight, but uh, the top and the bottom seem to want to go different ways. And uh, eventually we'll start turning. Yeah, there's a lot of forces acting on this ship, and uh, I don't necessarily know why. I tried to strut fix them, like duct tape, but I don't think that that's helping anything. Uh, it's just adding more lag, but that's alright. I know it works, and I guess that's all that matters. Alright, there we go. And this thing is a beast to move because I only have one vectoring engine on it. Oh, come on. Come on now. There we go. Alright. Sell the rocket boosters. Help us out a little bit. Neil, come on. You've been to the moon in a rickety spacecraft before. That's enough. This is nothing. <laughs> Alright. Good. Just stay like that. Now, what I'm going to do on the liquid fuel engines that are attached to the nuclear... Uh, engine piece is I'm actually going to disable the fuel on the bottom and in the middle just so I don't use them because I'm going to want to use them later on and you'll see what I mean the only problem with the one thruster engine is that uh, all of these other ones were not a fuel before it, it works fine <laughs> all right there we go go whoa 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 where you going buddy and solid rocket boosters
good. Where are we at? Much further than my last attempt with the solid rocket boosters. Very good. That means we're going to have more fuel. Alright, now I will turn back on the middle one here. Just so it can help us out a little bit. As you can see, the periapsis is coming in instead of outward. We're going to stop it at... Yeah, there. There is good, yeah. Good. Good, good, good. Okay, we have about half of this middle fuel tank left. We're going to disable that for now. I don't know if you guys have seen Le Goldfish. We're kind of having a little unofficial competition to see who can get to the planets first. I've beaten him to Duna. He's beaten me to the sun, even though it's not really a planet, but I mean, it was a cool celestial body. And I beat him to Eve. I actually did land on Eve, obviously, because I had to test out this craft. I don't know, it's fun. It's a friendly competition. I enjoy it. He was actually our first guest on the Minecraft co-op series, so uh, if you want to check him out there too, that would be nice. Other than that, yeah, check out his channel and subscribe to him, guys. Really great YouTuber. Okay, we are in a solar orbit. Okay, now I actually got this next part from another video, which, you know, I, I always do research before I make a video, but this technique was actually the coolest, I think. Instead of, you know, just guessing on what to do, how to change your plane in the solar orbit here, match up the two sides of your orbit so that it looks like one straight line, and put your capsule on the center of the sun. Now that you can see Eve's orbit, I will show you what you're supposed to do. Keep your capsule on the sun. I know it's going to be hard because you move your your line too, so you got to try to fix that. You see how Eve's orbit is coming closer and closer to ours? I know it's kind of hard to see with all this junk up there, but just believe me, it is. We're waiting for the intersection point for Eve's line and our line. This is the point where it creates a little X here that you want to burn at 180 degrees. The only thing I regret not adding to this thing was RCS. And you should see this periapsis jump down a little bit. Once both of these lines meet up with one another, you're matching the planes of ETH. Now because I have the nuclear engine, it is taking a little bit longer than usual. We're looking at these points right here, making sure they form one line. Now you may not get it perfect like this, uh, they're not exactly lined up correctly. Just as long as, um, you know, that completes the line, and you're close enough on this side, you're in the radius for Eve's encounter. We're essentially there. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna stop that. Forms one singular line. And, uh, yeah, now we're in the same plane as Eve. So we're on a slant as well. You can't see because there's so much junk and rings and all that stuff. Like I said in the last video, I wish there was some way of hiding a lot of the things up here. Let's get around to this apoapsis, and we'll see what we can do about getting an encounter. Now what I'm doing is actually fast forwarding it so that I can get Eve relatively right there when I'm at my apoapsis. That way there it's a little bit easier to guesstimate where an encounter will be. Okay, that's pretty much in a good area right there. So let's bring it to burn right about there, and we'll bring in this periapsis. Oh, there we go. Eve encounter. Off to Eve. Neil, calm down, please. Jeez. Let's see if we can actually see Eve. Okay, so there's the sun. Okay, I just had some issue where I actually couldn't control my ship, which was weird. It was just spiraling out of control. But all I did was go to the space center and then come back, and uh, it seems to be okay. So... <laughs> if we're facing the opposite direction of travel, uh, right there, can barely see it, but it's a flicker, so we're not close enough. Actually, you know what, I don't know what that flicker is. That's not where Eve is supposed to be. Eve is actually right there, so what the hell am I looking at? Oh, is that Kerbin? Oh, it's Kerbin! How are you doing, buddy? We can see Kerbin from here. <laughs> okay. Oh, all right. Anyways, back to business. We're actually in a very good position to intersect Eve. It's actually one of the better positions that I've ever been in. Stop it right there. Head on over to the point of burn. <laughs> the burning point. And we can pretty much fix our orbit once we get down there, but 
Let's turn on what these are actually meant for. The liquid fuel engines and go! Yeah, I needed the thrust to kill this. The speed on the inner planets, you need a lot more thrust to get rid of, or a lot more fuel to slow you down enough to encounter the planet. That's why I added them. Okay, they're all gone. Goodbye. Lost in the endless amount of space. Except when you got an icon for them. They're not really that lost. That's not full, is it? No. So why is it blue? I don't know. Okay. I'm not going to correct my orbit because I don't have enough fuel for that. But I will just go in and encounter the atmosphere so we can land on Eve. There it goes, like an inchworm, wrapping itself around. We're actually really horizontal, so I mean, I don't have to change anything. I'm just going to go in for the kill. Okay, and I'm actually going to EVA right now, just so I can uh, maybe get a couple pictures. It's always fun picking a picture for the thumbnail. I don't think I'll get any good ones here. I do like this image, but uh, Neil is facing the wrong way. There's a green glow, it looks like, which is actually really cool because uh, this is a purple planet. I don't know what would be creating the green. I guess that's the sunset. We have dark red, orange in our sky. Eve has green. I don't know. The oceans, which are hard to see right now, are actually gone. There is a bug that is now fixed. But uh, in this current version, there are no oceans. It's all invisible. I was going to bring in this orbit, but you know what? Let's just go around to the Apoapsis and just bring it in. That is a pretty planet. Now, Eve has a thick atmosphere, and I don't know where the atmosphere starts or whatnot, but I'm assuming this is... Yeah, this is close enough. I also don't know if there's anything on Eve that I should try to go for. I can't really see anything anyways. Gilly didn't even want me. How dare you? Asteroids don't care about, you know, people or astronauts or anything. They're just minding their own business, being captured by planets, maybe even smashing into one if they're lucky. <sighs> Alright, slow down some speed a little bit. Not that it really matters on a planet because it's got an atmosphere so we can use our parachutes, but I kind of want to get closer to the ocean. I know there isn't an ocean now, but when there is one, I want to show you that there is an ocean. <laughs> Alright, that's it for that. That's just going to smash into the surface, which I'm okay with. You, Neil? Yeah, you look okay with it. Alright, and um, parachutes are deployed when we get close enough. Alright, don't freak out, Neil, but we're going into the atmosphere very shortly. This is a pretty, pretty image here. I have to say, this is by far my favorite planet, just because of the color. Oh, there's, yep, you can see the green right there. Yeah, so that is the sunset-ish. Whoa, it just got really purple. Um, yep, we're in the atmosphere now. Yeah, so I think the atmosphere started around 90 or 80,000 kilometer meters. I've been saying kilometers, it's been meters, sorry. Okay, let's turn off SAS. We'll let it do its own thing. I do have to say that falling through this atmosphere, it takes a lot more time than Duna. Because like I said, this atmosphere is so thick that you, you just go so slow. Especially once these parachutes open up. We're going to be going like 2 meters per second. Well, we're not too far away from the coast. Although when we zoom in, like I said, there is no coast. I will be making an update video for the patch, only because it's going to be adding a couple of new things that I want to show you. God, that is some cool purple lighting. Wow. Okay. Warning. Hatch may open. <laughs> Hatch may open. Uh-oh. That's not good. It's another night landing. But what else is new? I can't land in the sun, apparently. On a side note, it's been 402 days. <laughs> That's only because I sped and tried to get Eve in a good position. It would probably be half that, or maybe even less. You can see a little bit of dunes here and there. You can see rocks, obviously. But uh, other than that, it's essentially Venus, so there's not much on it. Yeah, see? Three meters per second. Oh god, I lost the skybox. What the hell? 
There are no stars anymore! Oh no! We're being sucked into a black hole! Oh, hello there, rock. That is a big rock. And touchdown! The eagle has land. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, okay. But we are here, though. Let's open up the ladder and have Neil step foot on the surface for the very first time. And it is the very first time. I only make sure that they can actually land, and uh, then I end the mission. I do all of the uh, the EVAing on camera because I it's exciting to do things. God. That skybox it doesn't want to be there. <laughs> Look at his eyes. Up, down, up, down, up, down. There we go. Oh my god! <laughs> like a little bunny rabbit. Yeah, the gravity is is strong here. We can run though. Let's run into that rock. Let's go. Run! Run! Oh! Oh my! We lost Neil! No! Oh, there he is. Let's, uh, let's get the sun into view here. And here it is, the beautiful sunrise over Eve, where Neil Kerman will live out his life. I hope you all enjoyed, thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more.